Hello, everybody. It's Scott Pinyard, head coach of This Naked Mind, and I am here like I am every Sunday uh, to talk a little bit about what's on my mind, what I've been thinking about this week. Um, I love having this time to uh, hang out with you. Um, so I want to invite you to comment on this. Say hi. Ask me questions. I have some stuff to talk about. Always happy to answer your questions as well. Today, I want to tell you, and this sounds boring, but there's actually uh, something behind it. I want to tell you about uh, the process that I went through this weekend of cleaning out my basement, and it was so much in need. Um, but I want to get to that in a second. Before I do, I want to invite you to download a free copy of our book. This book sells for, I think it's like $17 on Amazon, um, but we want to give it to you for free. Uh, it's over at nakedlifestories.com. These are stories of people who made the choice to work through their issues with alcohol and were able to put it behind them. Um, there's a, a whole wide range of stories in there, including mine, by the way. Um, but we've got stories from people from all different walks of life, from all different parts of the globe who have gone through this process. Um, and if you feel like you'd like to read that for more inspiration, I know that was a huge part of my journey, head on over to Naked Life Stories dot com to get your free copy today. It's totally free. Uh, so we'd like you to read it. All right, that's out of the way. Let me talk to you about cleaning out my basement and uh, what I did this weekend. So uh, just a, a little bit of uh, facts about me. Uh, there are four of us who live in this house. Uh, I have been collecting stuff my entire life uh, and I have moved a lot. Um, and this weekend, my wife and I were talking about it. We realized like schedule wise, um, if we were ever going to clean out the basement, this was literally the only time we could do it. Uh, and so we looked at each other on Friday night and we're like, all right, let's do it. Now I had boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff down there, like tons of stuff down there. I had, uh, stuff that I had when I was in high school. I had stuff that I had when I was in elementary school. I had stuff that I had collected over, you know, various years of, of living where I was living and, and moving and changing. And it was so amazing to me um, when I looked through it, just how much I had. Like I had one thing, I remember I got this for a present when I was in college. Um, and I have moved 12 times since college. I counted it up and I've used this thing exactly once, which means 12 different times I've like put it on a truck or put it in a van and like driven it somewhere else. Um, and it was such a huge thing for me to just hold on to this. And it was really, it was an emotional thing for me. Um, Hang on a second. I want to say hi to some people and get back into it. Hey, Donna, congratulations on day three. That's awesome. Linda, Logan, how's it going? Um, yeah, it is a really good read. I totally agree with you, Lance. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Um, Michael did 34 days, October, November, but can't make it back. Had enough. Hey, uh, Michael, you're here. You're here. You're watching this. That's massive. That's huge. So I want to invite you to, uh, I want to invite you to keep watching these videos and keep doing this. Uh, Janice, how's it going? Jim. Hey, Jim. Like my hat, Jim? Jim's a Yankees fan. Uh, hey, Emma, how are you? Day four. That's fantastic. Um, so I had accumulated. I mean, it was a lot, right? So we bought this house. Uh, geez, we're coming up on two years ago now. Um, and so many times I had gone down to the basement. Our basement's essentially divided in half. A lot of people have this, right? Like on this side is like a couch and a TV and it's a place where the kids hang out and the toys are. And then on this side is just concrete. Um, and it was the storage room, right? The work room. And it was just full, man. I mean, like full, so much stuff in there. And I'd gone in there so many times <laughs> to get something. And I just like roll my eyes. You know, I, I just, I, I walk in there and I'm like, oh my God, like, it's just so much. Right. And so there have been so many times when I've decided, all right, I'm going to do it. Right. This is it. Um, I tried this, uh, three years ago, actually. Uh, I remember doing this, like walking in, it was, we were in a different place, but like walking into the storage room and being like, all right, I'm going to go through stuff. And, and what did I do? Right. Like I'd pull out this box and I'd look and I'd see this thing that so-and-so gave me. And I'd see this thing that I had when I was in high school. And I'd see this thing that meant a lot to me at some point in my life. And I, I couldn't do it. Right. I would get emotionally overloaded. Um, 
and what would happen was I would get, I would get sad, right? I'd be remembering these things that I had before. I would get angry. I would be thinking about, um, the fact that I've moved this damn thing 12 times, what's wrong with me, right? And I would have these emotions and I would get lost in these emotions. And over time, I just didn't deal with it, right? And yeah, so we'd move, fine. Like, what's the big harm, right? I got a couple of extra boxers. It was a lot more than a couple, um, but I had a few extra boxes to move. And it was so easy for me to just keep that locked downstairs, right? To keep that away from my day to day where I didn't have to look about, look at it and where I didn't have to think about it. Uh, let me say hi to a few more people and then we'll, we'll keep going here. And how's it going? Hey, Kathy, how are you? Rachel day six. That's so good. Ginny day four. Fantastic. Christine from Germany. Christine is going to be one of our coaches in training. I'm really excited to spend some time with you soon. Christine. Hi there. Um, Tracy, how are you? 71 alcohol-free days. That is amazing. And I love the way that you said five data points. I love it. I love it. Vivian is on day 248. Fantastic. Cassie's on day three. Veronica just did a year alcohol-free. Um, awesome. I'm so happy. I'm so happy for you, Veronica. That's great. Keith, hello. Brittany, you've never seen my face. Oh, wow. Well, here it is. This is my face. Good to see you, Brittany. Glad you're here. Uh, Keith, how are you? Jennifer, what book are we supposed to read and where do we get it? Jennifer, it's a free ebook. If you go to nakedlifestories.com, you can download it there. It is story after story of people who change their relationship with alcohol using this naked mind. Um, so it's great. It's great. It's awesome read. I love it. And I'm not just saying that because I wrote one of them. Like, it's really good. It's really inspiring. Um, Keith, how's it going? Um, Sophia, hello. Uh, Mark got back to work today. Christmas is over. It's a new day. That's right. It's a new day. Uh, Joseph, uh, Josephine just went through exactly this. Yeah, Josephine. I'll be interested to hear your reaction to what I have to say. 801 days today, Kim. That is amazing. That is so fantastic. Um, Joanne, how's it going? Day three. I am glad you're feeling awesome, Kathy. That's so good. Oh, wow. So many of you. Ginny, I'm AFAF, LOL. I love it. That's so good. Um, all right. Uh, hang on. I think I missed something. Vivian said, I've been fantasizing and having dr thoughts about drinking. It makes me anxious. Is this something about getting close to a year? Just trying to figure it out. Yes, Vivian. Um, you know, a lot of times this milestone like comes up for us and we go, oh, I, I don't know. Like, is this really what I wanted? Is this not what I wanted? Um, what you're experiencing is totally normal. Let me give you a couple of things that can help you out. First and foremost, um, have grace for yourself. That's what I'm about to talk about here. So listen to what I have to say out of the rest of my basement cleaning out story. Secondly, um, it's okay. Anything that you're feeling is okay, right? Take a moment when those thoughts are coming to you and ask yourself the question of like, what do I need right now? You know, what is it that I need? You know, go back to sort of the basics and the stuff that that you learned a year ago when you made this transformation um, and really kind of revisit that stuff. A year, our heads can get a little messed up around uh, like anniversaries like this, especially the first year. You start to go, wow, did I, first of all, did I really just do that? That's crazy. Secondly, do I want to continue that? Follow those thoughts, allow yourself to have the emotions that you're having, uh, connect with those, understand that for yourself. Um, there's no wrong answers. So take a moment and just really kind of dig into what is it that I need, reflect back over this year, and you'll start to find those answers inside of yourself, which you've had all along. Um, so congratulations, Vivian. That's really, really cool. And do not feel bad at all that you're having those thoughts. It is an entirely normal part of the process. Um, all right, so back to my junk story, right? I got a basement. It's not junk. Uh, actually, the stuff's, there's a lot of great stuff, um, but I just had boxes and boxes of it. So um, like I said, I would go to, I would go to clean it out and I'd go to the storage room and I would, you know, like get nostalgic. I'd get sad about times gone by. I'd get angry that I'd let it get this bad. Um, and I, I just, I wasn't able to do it. I was not able to do it because the emotions were there, because the guilt was there, because frankly, the shame was there of like having a basement full of stuff like, ah, I don't want that. Right. And, uh, you know, we bought this house two years ago 
And I remember thinking to myself, like, oh, at some point I might need to get a storage shed. And just those thoughts in my brain, I was I, I was just like, I can't believe this, dude. How is that possible? You have more room than you've ever had. And now you're talking about storage, right? Um, my point is, every time I approached it, I got emotional and I, it made me feel awful, right? And the reason that I was getting emotional is that I was beating myself up. I was not giving myself grace. Uh, you might have heard me say earlier, I moved 12 times since college. I'm 40, guys. It's It's been a while, but it hasn't been that long. Uh, 12 times in almost in 18 years. That's a lot, right? I've been through a lot, right? I've been through a divorce. I've had two kids. I got remarried. Like, there's been so many things that have happened. I was not giving myself any grace. And so these, these, these possessions, these things that I had downstairs, um, they would kick up a ton of emotion in me. And so fast forward to this week when my wife and I were like, all right, now's the time, right? We're going to do this. What happened with me emotionally, right? How was I able to go down there and start doing it? Well, I had this thought. I woke up early yesterday before we started and I started thinking through why is it that like time after time after time, I just wasn't able to get to the end of this. Like I wasn't able to do it. I wasn't able to get rid of this stuff. And so I would just put it in storage and then I'd move it when I moved, then I'd move it again when I moved. Um, and I never had to deal with those emotions. And so finally I realized that I wasn't giving myself grace. It's okay, right? That's what I realized. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to miss the people connected to these things. It's okay to feel sad that, and maybe a little mad that like I've moved this box 10 times and never unpacked it. It's okay to feel, um, to feel a little, I don't know, I, shame isn't quite the right word, just unhappy that I let things pile up like this. And as soon as I gave myself that permission to feel that way and stopped judging myself for the position I was in, guess what happened? It was like, it was like a storm. I mean, it was just, I was on a tear. I did uh, three trips to Goodwill in a minivan with all the seats down, by the way. Um, I think they're getting sick of me toward the end of the day, but it was so liberating. I was able to let go of that for myself. I was able to say, look, it's okay that you are where you are. Let's just move forward, man. Like stop, you know, getting stuck in what happened before. Stop uh, beating yourself up for the fact that it's in the, it's in the condition that it was in. It doesn't do anything. And it really reminded me of this idea that we talk about here, right? This idea of grace for ourselves, this idea of saying, hey, it's not your fault that you are where you are in your alcohol journey, but it is your responsibility. So what are you going to do? And that was the question I essentially asked myself, like, all right, I'm not going to blame myself here. Like I could go on and on and on and give you guys a million reasons why I had my basement so full of stuff. Um, I could, I could just keep telling you and telling you. And I could also tell you, by the way, not only why is it so full of stuff, but why haven't I dealt with it yet? Right. Even though it bothered me, even though it was a problem. I had story after story and I'll tell you what, I am convincing. <laughs> <laughs> like when I want to be, I, I can convince you, I can convince myself, but it wasn't until I gave myself that grace where I was able to say, wait a minute, hang on. There is something here, right? There is something here that I can work on. There is something here that I can work through. And what I'm here to tell you about is like that, that transformation, that transformation of saying, hey, it's okay with where I'm at. I'm going to decide to move forward. That's available to you too. And that is a huge part of what we do at This Naked Mind, right? When we work with people to try to get people to that place that they want to get to, which is alcohol-free, the very first thing you will ever hear me say in uh, anytime I answer a question, anytime you see us in any of our programs, all the time, right at the front is have grace for yourself, right? Give yourself grace. And that was something that I just wasn't doing, you know? I wasn't doing that. I wasn't doing that with the stuff in my basement. And because of that, it was year after year after year of more stuff and more stuff and more stuff. Like I have no plans on moving anytime soon, but I will tell you this right now. If I had moved all of that stuff that was down there, I would have been so incredibly angry with myself, right? And what does that do, right? That just stops me from getting it done sooner. 
And so I want to invite you, if you're at a place right now, and it's early January 2021, and you might be thinking, you know what, I, I want to make a change. And, and maybe it is alcohol. You know, if it's alcohol, let's talk. But it could be anything, right? When you find yourself, maybe you find yourself in a position where you're angry, you've gained a little bit of weight over COVID, right? Uh, as we all have, right? Maybe you're mad about that. Maybe you're mad about a relationship. Maybe you're unhappy about your job. Whatever it might be, give yourself the grace because it's gonna be from that space where it's okay for you to feel what you feel, where it's okay for you to think what you think. It's only going to be from that space that you can move forward. Until then, all you're doing is beating yourself up. All you're doing is closing the door in the basement, turning that light off, and going upstairs and pretending like it doesn't exist. And I'm here to tell you, that doesn't work. <laughs> I tried it. I tried it, guys. It doesn't work. The stuff is still there, right? The stuff is still in the basement. So until you're able to allow yourself the feelings and to give yourself the grace of what of what you're going through and your circumstance this isn't the same as making an excuse but just making it okay right giving yourself grace that's how you can step forward and i recognize that everything that i'm saying about this uh is is very much counter to what you hear in a lot of sort of quit drinking uh communities and that's just not how we roll right here the very first step is grace grace isn't down the road you don't have to earn it you don't have to, uh, you know, not drink for long enough or get far enough in the process till you're absolved. No, it's a choice that you make. That doesn't mean that you don't have to take responsibility. Like, of course you do, right? I gave myself grace for what's in the basement. And then I carried all that shit up the stairs <laughs> and out to the van over and over and over, right? I gave myself grace, but then I took responsibility. And I want to tell you that that is available for you too. It's, it's a choice that you can make. And I understand that it might not feel like it. And I understand that you might be thinking, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't deserve this maybe, or I've done too much, or, you know, my particular situation is so awful. And I want to tell you that everyone thinks that. And I want to tell you that you're welcome to come into this group, to join one of our programs and to talk about that, because I promise you when you do, you will meet people who feel the same way. It's all about giving ourselves the grace in order to take the first step, right? It's about giving ourselves the grace in order to get moving. And that often is one of the hardest parts in the process. But I will tell you that once you can do it, possibilities just open up for you. And I want to tell you that we're here, right? This Naked Mind is here. This group is here. We're all here to help you work through that. Um, let me get to a couple more comments here. Let's see. Anna Joy, day three. That's awesome. Nancy, day 31. Yes, that's so cool. I love it. Tara, two years in February. Not my easiest choice, but one of my better ones for certain. I love that. You know, it's funny. I have this thing. Uh, I think I said it the other day, actually, on this live, on a live I did. But um, I don't know a single person who regrets quitting drinking. Isn't that funny? Like every other thing I can think of, every other decision, big decision people have in their lives, I always find people who are like, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Um, that is not the case for, for alcohol. Um, I did meet one person, uh, and this is one person that I worked with. When I started working with her, she was 11 months alcohol free, but not feeling great. Um, she still didn't regret, regret drink, uh, quitting drinking, but she did feel like, man, I'm missing some stuff. And so we worked together, but that's as close as I've ever come. I've never met anyone who's been able to say that before. Christina in Scotland, 127 days alcohol free. That is so good. That is so good. Linda said, I have this problem in my house right now. I look almost like a hoarder because I don't have a basement. I've kind of been on hold this year while COVID has been put into a holding pattern. Oh, I totally get that. I totally and completely get that. Good news is I don't know where you are, Susie, here in Maine. Um, Goodwill was still open. We called before I loaded up the van. Um, but I was able to I was able to do that. But yeah, this is something that a lot of people experience, right? And that's another thing about this. Um that's another thing that I see quite often with this that is an interesting parallel to drinking um, is how many of us think we're alone, right? How many of us think like, oh man, no one is like this, right? Like, this is awful. I can't believe I behaved this way, right? The sort of things that we tell ourselves about alcohol, 
The same thing's true with clutter. Um, we all have it. We all have it. And it is, um, it is something that absolutely, um, it's something that's absolutely important that we understand that like this is a process for all of us. So thank you for saying that, Linda. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm not the only one. Um, I knew it wasn't true, but still. Um, Susie, how's it going? Uh, Jennifer, it's okay that you are where you are. Yes, 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 100%. Um, it is okay. Like no matter where you are, it is okay. And actually accepting that is what allows you to move forward. It's weird. It's, it seems paradoxical, but it is, uh, it is the case. Uh, Kim says it's okay to organize in little increments of time too. For me, five to 10 minutes at here, there adds up. Oh, Kim. Yes, totally. And I don't mean to imply that like, um, that anyone should do what I did, right? And just force themselves to do it. All I was saying is that I recognized for me and kind of my life and the way things worked, it wasn't until I gave myself grace for the emotions I was having, for the situation that I was in, that I was able to move forward. I know a lot of people who do the five to 10 minutes as well. And it's uh, it's amazing. Um, so thank you for that, Kim. Susie says, I'm cleaning out all my stuff. I started the Whole30 Foods that are good for you. I'm cleaning out the refrigerator now, in with the new, and out with the old, three months sober, and I'm excited. I love that, Susie. Susie, I totally love that. Um, let's see, Mark. Mark says, you hold on the things more through emotional need than practical purpose. If we can declutter our life, we can declutter our mind. So, so totally true. And I mean, that was the case. I remember I was looking at certain things down there and the same thing is true for alcohol too. Like the parallels between the stuff journey and the alcohol journey were striking me uh, so much over the last few days. Um, but I remember there were certain things that I was like, oh, look at that. It's this thing from when I was six. That's cute, right? Guess what? That memory is in there whether or not I look at the thing. And I know that because I've thought of this memory multiple times, but that thing has been in a box for 10 years, right? Uh, you're totally true. You're totally correct. It's emotional need and, and letting go. That's is the way that it works. And the same thing is true with alcohol, right? Look at what we say about alcohol. Like, oh, well, I need it to have a good time, right? I need it to be connected. I need it for all of these reasons that, you know, we've taken on board. There are other people's beliefs, or maybe there's sometimes they're ours. And we take those on board and we're like, I need to do this. I need to drink in order for this, right? That's what I was thinking about this stuff. I need to have this stuff in order to remember, but it was in inside me the whole time. And that same thing is true with joy or connection or compassion um, or dealing with stress, right? All of those things we actually have the capability to do. It's just that we kind of tell us that there's some external thing that's going to get us there. And that's just not the case. Um, hey, Melissa, how are you? Good to see you. Um, Kylie's mind is blown. Awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, let's see. Tracy said, I still have my lunchbox from grade one, 1979. I have boxes that follow me in my life, but I never unpack three days today with a goal of seven days alcohol free. I love it. I love it. I love it, Tracy. That's so good. That's so good. And, um, you know, keep going uh, at three days, four days, five days. You know, what you're going to find is that you're going to open up so much more uh, emotionally and mentally, and it's going to be fantastic for you. So that is fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Um, Julie, love the newbies. Yeah, there's a lot of new people watching, which is great. Caroline, day one for Caroline. Yes, that is awesome. Congratulations. That is so cool. Um, I'm really, really happy for you, Caroline. So great. Um, so great to hear that. Uh, Joanne says, how does denial fit into your story? Any thoughts? Love this program. Yeah, well, it's interesting. I guess you kind of teed me up to talk about this a little bit more, but yeah, denial was a big part of my story. You know, like a lot of us, you know, I first had the thought, um, where I first had the thought where I, um, you know, I want to, I, I, I need to do something about this drinking thing uh, years before I actually quit. And my initial reaction was denial. My initial reaction was, nope, cram that down, right? You don't have to, um, you know, and then the usual things like finding other people that drank as much as I did and said, see, it's not actually just me, right? And so denial lasted a long time and it does for a lot of us. And I think that comes from the fact that first of all, you know, we feel these emotions that I was talking about, this shame and this blame, this anger, whatever it might be. Um, you know, we feel that and we don't want to feel that. And so we push it away, right? And denial is a great way to do that, right? Look, my friends drink as much as I do. Look, my husband or my wife drinks as much as I do. Look, it's 
you know, I haven't gotten a DUI, whatever, you know, whatever it is that we tell ourselves, um, that, that is a huge part of the story. And again, like, we're so afraid of opening up, right? We're so afraid of saying, yeah, like, I was so afraid of that thought that I had to do something about alcohol that I had to work to just like get rid of it. Um, why did I do that? I did that because I was so afraid of looking at what was right in front of me and giving myself the grace and the forgiveness to actually be able to move forward. And it wasn't until that moment, Joanne, it wasn't until that moment when I was able to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to let go of this. I'm going to let go of the shame. I'm going to let go of the fear. I'm going to let go of the anger. I'm going to let go of the worry of what my life was going to be like. And instead of that, I'm going to, to work with this thing directly, right? That is exactly what I'm talking about. There's the same process with the stuff as it was with my alcohol journey. But great question. I, I love that, Joanne. Mark says, our emotions will constantly berate when we perceive that they are controlling us. Yes, 100%. Hey, Maria. Maria says, uh, hey, Scott, happy new year. I know there's loads of groups, but I do like your Sunday nights, and I'm so grateful for you and Annie and the team. Really turn the corner in 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. That's really awesome. I'm really happy. And it is Sunday. I keep forgetting it's Sunday night for you over there in England. Uh, I'm glad you're here, Maria. I'm really glad you're here. Uh, Julie says, yay, Grace. Exactly. 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 Josephine uh, says, thanks so much for sharing your story. I had similar issues processing all the emotions, thoughts around the past, etc. Finally forced myself to face all of it and honor the memories. I'm now selling a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace. That's awesome. Right? Cash in. That's great, Josephine. Um, so good. Let's see. Uh, Maria, I'm excited too. I've found myself being so thankful these last few days in an overwhelming way for being alcohol free and having control back and my life back. Yes, yes. I love it. I love it. Sarah says, I think I've done so much drinking that I barely have any early memories. Sarah, so let me talk about that a little bit. That will change. That will shift as time goes on. I actually had a very similar thought uh, when I was going through this. You know, I'd think of someone would mention something from a while ago and I just, I couldn't, it, it left my mind. Um, but the good news is that that changes. Um, you need to give yourself time and space and of course the grace to move forward, but eventually those things can come back. It's absolutely possible. Um, let's see, day three for Annie. Hey Annie, that's awesome. Uh, Karen says day one for me. And Ginny asks, what do you exactly mean by grace? <sighs> It's the magic question. I love that question so much. So grace is, um, well, I'll put it this way. Grace is a really important concept to this naked mind. Like when we talk about grace, we talk about this idea. Um, we talk about this naked mind. We'll actually say it's a compassion or grace based, uh, compassion led or grace led and scientifically based process. Like grace, compassion is all kind of in, uh, in, in the, the very center of what we do. So when I say grace, what I mean is continuous goodwill toward yourself, right? Is allowing yourself, uh, having some compassion for where you're at, making sure that you understand, hey, it's okay um, that you are where you are. Essentially, the idea of forgiving yourself, not necessarily for like individual things, um, not necessarily for um, to let yourself off the hook, but to say, hey, it's okay that I am where I am. Um, this is a really hard concept for a lot of people, right? The idea of self-compassion is not something that came to me easily uh, when I started. It was absolutely not, right? I came from this idea and this tradition that if I just keep beating myself up, I'll eventually get where I wanna get. So you wanna lose weight, keep beating yourself up for you know eating that chocolate. You wanna uh, quit drinking, quit, qu keep beating yourself up and eventually you'll make the change. And the fact is, science tells us that's just not the way that we change. And so it's through having grace, it's through having compassion for ourselves. It's through, um, it's through being able to allow ourselves uh, the space to say, hey, we're human, right? And humans do stuff. And sometimes that stuff isn't stuff we like. Um, and giving ourselves that grace, that allows us to stand where we're at and then move forward from there. Um, so another word for grace, like I said, could be 
um, could be uh, self-compassion. Um, it could be to honor yourself. Um, it is uh, literally the idea of being able to be okay with yourself and absolving yourself, not necessarily from responsibility if there are issues out there and that you need to make changes about, but just saying, hey, I'm okay. This, this process where I find myself now doesn't make me a bad human. It makes me a human. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, that's a great, that's a great question, Jenny. Um, Susan, thank you for being here, Susan. That's so awesome. Uh, Lydia is on day three. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. That's so good. Um, uh, I'm days away from three years, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. It's so good to hear from you. Um, you are all absolutely in the right place. You've got this. Take it from Lisa. She knows. I know Lisa really well. She's fantastic. Um, and yes, uh, three years. That's so cool, Lisa. Uh, tell me what the day is. I want to I wanna celebrate with you when you get there. Um, Jan says, I signed up on New Year's Eve thinking it started Monday. Still listening to the pre-work videos. Should I jump ahead to day three so I can get current? Um, actually, so Jan, this is not part of the live alcohol experiment. This is actually just a live video on this Naked Minds Facebook page. I go live every Sunday um, on the This Naked Mind page. So you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, definitely go into the group and ask them that question. Um, we, we're only on day three, so good news is um, you're early on enough that you can dig in, but this is not, you don't have to think of this as part of the live alcohol experiment. This is actually just me going live for this Naked Mind because this is uh, this is when I normally do. Um, thank you, Jenny says. Makes much more sense than taking a personal inventory. I totally get it. Totally get it. One year and one day from Megan Gray. That is so awesome. Uh, all right. Uh, Lisa says the 22nd. Lisa, that is days away. Holy moly. Um, hang on. I just wanted to put that, uh, make a note of something. Sorry about that. Um, uh, but that's fantastic, Lisa. Congratulations on that. Congratulations. Um, let's see. Uh, Robin says, shoot, I thought I had this. I stopped for four months, then drink. What is that? And I feel defeated. I hear you, Robin. I totally hear you. And let me give you a couple of things to think about. Now, first, uh, everything that I've said <laughs> in today's video is something to think about. The idea of giving yourself grace, the idea of not beating yourself up is a huge part of this process. And it's so important. Um, so first and foremost, let give yourself some compassion, right? This journey of going alcohol free and anyone who's gone on it can tell you this um, is not a straight line, right? We don't just decide one day we're not going to drink anymore and then boom, we're not drinking anymore. That's not how it works, right? We have to learn like we learn anything else. Uh, and so this sort of stuff happens, this idea of a few months off and then bang, I'm right back to where I was. That is absolutely part of the process. So that's the first thing. The second thing I can tell you is stay engaged, stay communicating, stay vulnerable, open up here, open up in one of our programs, whatever, whatever it is, right? Stay on the trail. Um, it is okay to have setbacks. Actually, it's normal to have setbacks. I had thousands of them. I can tell you Annie had so many of them. Um, but getting the getting the support and everything that you can from this group and, and other places is going to make all the difference for you. Um, so I want you to know, again, that this is absolutely not your fault. It is your responsibility, right? It's not your fault that you are with alcohol. Alcohol is, a, is an addictive substance. Robin, right? Like we don't blame people for getting addicted to things. Um, however, we do expect them to take the steps to move forward. And that's what you're doing, right? That's what you're doing by watching this video. That's what you're doing by taking those four months. It's totally part of the process. So stay vulnerable, stay open, communicate. And one last thing I'll tell you, um, which someone mentioned it earlier in this, um, is I really encourage you to view this as a data point, not a relapse, not falling off the wagon, not messing up or failing or any of those other words that we use. I want you to consider the fact that you, you're drinking again as a data point, all right? You were going along in your alcohol-free life for four months and then something happened, right? Something changed, an event, a person, a thought, an emotion, a season, right? Whatever it was for you, something changed. At that moment, uh, you made the decision to drink. So the key thing here is to look at this as data, 
right? This is not, this doesn't have a value of good or bad. It's just data. So go take a look at what happened a few months ago, right? What were the thoughts that you were having? What were the emotions that you were having? What did you really need when you were going through that? If you can go back and look and treat this experience as data, then you can learn from it. And so next you can get to four months and then five months and then six months and on and on and on. Um, so thank you for sharing. I'm really glad there's some great uh, support for you in the chat. Uh, so I want you to absolutely check that out too, Robin. Marsha says, I've been alcohol free before and I feel like it won't be difficult this time around, but I love the dynamics of this group. I haven't heard all the videos, but this is the second one with you. And I've listened to some of the mentors. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Marsha. Again, this isn't the live alcohol experiment. This is just me going live uh, on the, the This Naked Mind Facebook page, but I'm glad it helps. And maybe we should simulcast this. It might actually not be a bad idea. Um, so, but anyway, I'm so happy, uh, that you're enjoying the dynamics. There's so much, uh, to say about the approach that we take, um, that is compassion based as opposed to force. Um, so welcome, Marsha. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right. Just a couple more and then I got to move forward. Uh, Susie data is perfect. Exactly. Uh, progress, not perfection. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Maria. So Maria says, I learned the bigger picture is most important on this journey and being kind to yourself and not giving up. Data point is the way to see it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, that is it for me. I got to run. Uh, I'm actually going to relax now instead of running boxes all over the place and get a couple of, a couple of hours to, to chill out before my weekend is over. Um, so what I want to say to you, first of all, if you find yourself at this place where you are trying to make this change and you just find yourself continuously beating yourself up and feeling shame and feeling blame, give yourself some compassion right? Give yourself some grace. And just like me with my stupid basement full of stuff, right? When I could, when I would have allowed myself to feel those emotions, when I allowed myself to let go of the judgment that I was feeling, um, everything changed, everything changed. And I cleaned that basement out in two days, right? The same thing is possible for you. Again, it's not necessarily going to be an overnight journey. Quitting drinking is definitely harder than emptying out a basement. So I want to be very clear about that. But you have the possibility to do that. And one of the best ways to get inspired, one of the best days to like engage and, and find out more is to hear from people who've gone through it before. So if you are interested in how you can learn to give yourself some grace, head on over to nakedlifestories.com. It's a totally free ebook. Um, you can get it from us completely free. It's a bunch of stories, mine included, of people who have made the choice to give themselves them, their compassion and then everything opened up for them. Um, so thank you so much for hanging out with me for this last 37 minutes. Um, happy New Year to everybody. Happy 2021. Um, I hope it is awesome for you and I will be back next Sunday. Take care.